I woke up like this. I woke up like this. Okay, just kidding. All right, so this is my first video blog I'm going to put out there to everybody to see. My name is Rona, and I'm 38 years young. And about three weeks ago, I was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. Okay, so here's my current situation. In 2010, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, stage two. And I underwent a double mastectomy. I got my ovaries removed and two rounds, six rounds of chemo. I tested positive for the BRCA gene. Who all doesn't know what that means? Basically, the BRCA gene is this breast cancer gene mutation that they test your blood. Basically saying that you predestined to get cancer. So once I got cancer, they tested me for the gene, find out, yep, I had the gene. So that's why I decided to do a double mastectomy because I only found one lump in my breast on my left side in 2010. Okay, so let's speed up to 2014, okay? 2014, I'm going along my merry old business. It's almost Valentine's Day. It's in February. I go to the doctor because I feel like I got a UTI. Hmm. Long story short, the doctor does the whole look over with me, like, okay, what's going on with you? How are you feeling? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, this is that, 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 that's going on. Lo and behold, I have a mass on my chest. You're not going to be able to see it. But upon examination, there's a mass on my chest, and I have some lymph nodes underneath my left arm, same side as the cancer was last time, people. It's there. So, went through that whole deal. We got the mass. Got a biopsy, it's cancer, okay. I get to St. Louis with my family. We take more tests. The cancer has metastasized, or metastasized, whatever you want to call it. And it's in my bones. Apparently, I have cancer in my lower back. Some ribs, activity on the PET scan. Something up here in my lymph nodes, in my shoulder, and my left leg. None of my bones are... Um, on the verge of cracking or fracturing or anything like that. Okay, so let's speed you up. This is why it's so important. I wanted to talk to you guys about... I had my first round of chemo about two weeks ago. And it was a mother of a chemo. And I was sick the minute they unhooked and took the port thing out. I have a port put in. It's got right here. It's got right here. And... My stomach felt like I had been riding a roller coaster for like six hours. It was ridiculous. Okay, so stomach hurts, uh, nausea severe, um, severe fatigue, s severe body aches, and the weirdest thing this time. This is, I'm, I got a point to this. I felt during the chemo. This is weird. This is very transparent, but during the chemo, I felt tingling in my vagina. I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool, I guess. But no, not cool because that tingling eventually came to feeling like a pool, like the bottom, like my vagina was going to fall out. I didn't like that feeling. I'm like, word, who does that? Why? So I've come up with this solution. I'm vowing not to do chemo anymore. I'm also on this clinical child drug, okay? It's supposed to be good for cancer like mine. I've already done my research. They're telling me 18 months. 50% 50, 50 of women diagnosed or people diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer um, have 18 months to live. 20% can live for three more years. Diet, exercise, plus chemo. I'm not really set that chemo is the right answer for me, people. I don't want to spend my last days, if it's going to be my last days, whether it's a month, a year, two years, three years, four years, five years. I don't want to spend them sick, can't take care of my kids. My whole family had to come to my help, to my aid. I had to get soup made. I mean, it was just it's ridiculous. My son, who's seven, was, I love you every five minutes. Mommy, are you okay? He already thinks I'm going to die. It's a scary situation, you guys, and I don't know what to do. I, 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 well, I do know what to do. Don't, I'm not, don't let me tell you guys that lie. Prayer, 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 and faith, faith, faith. I'm so unbelievably strong. I don't even know. Well, I do know where the strength comes from. People say, I don't know where you get your strength. God. Hello, Jesus. 
I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. And that, you know, and that's, and I'm a true believer. I'm a true believer that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. So I know regardless of the outcome, I'm going to be okay. Whether I stay here on this earth and live a long, prosperous, healthy life, perfect. Or whether I go king, to my kingdom and see my God, perfect. The thing is, is my family is not okay with me feeling that way. They are like, don't talk like that. And I'm like, well, it's just reality. And I know God can do all things but fail. So it's his will, what I do. It's his will. I'm going to do what I do here on earth, the earthly things, which is put the right things in my body this time, which is to figure out whether or not, like, I doubt it. I'm going to take chemo. I might. I pretty much already set that I'm not taking any more chemo. Um... But I'm going to do everything earthly possible to stay here as long as possible. But if it's in God's will that I move on, let it be God's will. You cannot do anything about that. And that's one thing that frustrates me is people try to, to, to stop God's will. It's God's will, baby. It's his will, not mine. We can pray, and that's what he wants us to do. And yes, he's an awesome God. But what we need to pray for is a healing, yes. Because I need to be healed whether I stay here or I go to my Heavenly Father. Okay? And we just need to pray for His will to be done. Because that's what it is. It's His will. Nobody can control His will. So whatever the outcome is, I need everybody else out there to be okay with it. Okay, so that's today's. It's April 1st, 2014. I'm supposed to get another chemo on April the 8th. The jury's still out on that. I was dead set up until... Honestly, last night, I was watching TV because I stay up late, just thinking all the time. And I was watching The Little Couple on TLC. And the mom, Jennifer, was diagnosed with stage 3 cancer. Um, it was a rare cancer, I forget the kind. And it also had nodules on her lung. And she was taking chemo every week. And they just brought home their brand new baby from India. And I thought, her strength and... She's doing this chemo, and now I looked up on the internet, she's in remission, so maybe chemo is the right route. So I'm going to still consult with my doctor and other people, and my God, of course. Um, but she gave me a newfound strength. People are looking at me for strength, like, you're so strong, you're so strong. Yeah, but... I'm strong because of God, and I still have my moments. I'm I'm human. I'm still flesh all day long. Let's see, it hurts when I do this because it's flesh. It's flesh, and that's what it's supposed to do. So I'm still trying to contemplate whether I'm going to do chemo or not. The main reason is because I don't want my children to see me die. My mom died of breast cancer, and we watched her die. It was horrific. I don't want to... You know what I remember right now? I can't even... And this is what the main thing is, is that when my mom died, I forgot what she looked like healthy. I can only picture her sick, and I don't want that for my kids. But only Even now to this day, so many years later, she died in 1990, I still think of her as sick in the hospital bed. I don't think of her as my bubbly, beautiful mom. And I couldn't remember her voice. The only time I would see her unhealthy, I mean, healthy, is in my dreams. I would have dreams, and I would dream that she was healthy, and we went to the hospital to see her, and her cancer was cured. It, it, I don't want my, I want my kid, and I know that eventually we all going to die. We all going to die of something. And yeah, okay, so the cancer's making me unhealthy, but at least I'm not worried about my quantity of how many more years, weeks, months, days that I'm here. I'm worried about my quality, and I'm worried about getting some things done before I go, like making sure my kids know Jesus and know that it's that mommy's okay with what's going on. They need to be okay with it, but make sure they know that that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, for our sins. That's the number one thing I'm going to do before making sure they know it now. My kids are in tune, but I'm going to drive it home, and I want to go on a vacation. I want to go to Hawaii. I've only been to one vacation in my life. And I want to go on another one. And I just want to smell roses and run and play in the grass and just be, be as active and as healthy as I can before I go to my, 
my spiritual place before I go to my kingdom. Because I'm going to heaven. Oh, yeah. And that's another thing I need to make for sure. I need to make sure I'm staying in my word. And to make sure that I'm repenting. And to make sure that I forgive some people. Because I don't want to go into heaven with baggage. And I know they say when you go, all the baggage is gone. But I'm in tune. And I, I just feel like I need to get right before I go. And I'm ready. Whether it's today, tomorrow, a year from now, two years from now, ten years from now. I'm ready to go. I thank you all for listening. I will video blog again. And I will continue to do it. At this point, I love you all and I love God. And I'll blog again. But at this point, this is what stage four cancer looks like, people. If this is stage four, then just know that there is a God. Just know that there is a God. Because I'm not in any immense pain. I'm in a little pain. But nothing that a, a Tylenol or ibuprofen can't cure or an ice pack or a heating pack can't cure here and there. You know, I'm... I, I just feel like I feel so good mentally and physically that I can do this without the chemo and spiritually. That's the most important. God bless.